What is up my crafty friends? My name is Carrie and I want to welcome you to my channel. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare and y'all if you're not familiar with them, they are a super fun and informative online learning community that is more tailored toward really, really learning a new skill. So they go into a little bit more depth. You can learn anything from watercolor painting to video editing to how to grow your social media. It's packed with lots and lots of information. I'm on a mission right now at this very moment to get more organized. I've got a bazillion and one things and y'all, I really struggle being that creative person with organization. I've got myself a brand new planner, but y'all, I'm gonna be taking a new class from Skillshare and it's gonna help me with digital organization. This class is called Productivity Masterclass, Create a Custom System That Works. The instructor is Thomas Frank and y'all, this is a great and informative class. It tells you all about managing your tasks, setting up your calendars, taking your notes, how to organize your digital and your physical files, get better with emails and lots, lots more. I'm really hoping it's gonna help me to take that organization level up one more notch. I know I can be a lot more productive if I can just organize my life. So this is something new for me. I'm really excited to try it. I know this is something that I must do if I want to get more productive and just kind of accomplish more things in the day. So y'all, Speaking of new things, I've got a fun new DIY project for y'all today. And wait until I show you what it is. Ah! Y'all look at this gorgeous sign. I just designed this on the laser. It's so cute. I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to paint this gorgeous sign. It's cut out of quarter inch birch plywood. I've got some really fun techniques that I'm going to share with you today. Look at this awesome crackle. It is so pretty and so fun. And y'all, it doesn't require anything special. You can even find it at the Dollar Tree. Y'all, I'm so excited to share this sign with you. I'll be sure to put a link to my website down in the description box if you want to check it out. This will be a limited edition. It's not something I'm going to keep around all the time in the shop because, of course, it is just a fall design. I'm even going to show you how to make the fun little bow that goes on top. So if you want to find out how to make this gorgeous, hey there pumpkin sign, be sure to keep watching. And if you enjoy it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up because that would mean the world to me. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. And don't forget to turn on all those notifications if you don't want to miss anything I've got coming your way. So that's enough talking y'all. Let's go paint a fall sign. Y'all, Skillshare is totally hooking up my subscribers. They are going to give the first 1,000 people to join Skillshare a free one-month membership. That means you can check out all of the classes that you want to. Take as many as you want to during that free one-month trial. And I know you're going to learn something new and you're going to totally tap into that creativity. Okay, y'all, here's our sign we're going to paint today. It is literally hot off of the laser. I just took it off. I have not even played around with this to see how it looks. So y'all are the very first ones to see this, and I'm really excited. Now, I do want to point out a couple of things before we get started. The first one is this sign is made out of quarter-inch plywood. The only pieces that are not made out of quarter-inch are these two little pieces here, and that's just because I didn't want the sign to be too thick. Now, these are separate pieces, so that's going to make it really easy to paint your pieces. These words are connected. The pumpkin words are not connected. And I do have all of the suggested placements already lasered out to make it super duper easy for you. Now, this is just merely a suggestion. You can paint this ever how you want to. You can place this any how you want to. Now, so get creative. Don't just go by what I'm doing. Use your imaginations and come up with something awesome. Now, I wanna give you a couple of suggestions that you could do as far as placement. You could even make your pumpkin words sort of curve around to the bottom here, I think that would be cute. This is gonna be all painted, so you're really not even gonna see what is under here. So don't, don't worry about that. So like I said, just get creative. 
Don't think you have to do it just because I'm doing it this way. Let your imaginations go crazy. I do think that's a super cute placement though. So again, all of your pieces are going to come unpainted. Once I get all the pieces painted, I'm going to go in and glue everything together with my Starbond glue. This is the thick glue. It's an instant adhesive. It is a high performance CA glue and y'all, it is great for bonding together wood. So let's get started. I'm, of course, going to be going in with some turquoise color today. I'm also going to be using some really pretty orange. This color is called Tangelo. It's from the Arteza Outdoor Acrylic Colors. The next color I'm going to go with is an Amy Howard at Home color. This color is called Indian Summer. And y'all, it's this yummy, pretty gorgeous turquoise color. I can't turn the paint can up too much, but I am going to take that top off so you can see it. Ooh, look at that. Oh, so pretty. I absolutely love orange and turquoise together. I'm also going to go in with some of the Baja Buff from the Amy Howard at Home. You can get the little sample sizes from amakerstudio.com and I'm again the color from a Maker Studio is Baja Buff and then this one is called Indian Summer. I'm going to use two Arteza Outdoor Acrylic Colors today. The first one is Charcoal Black. The second one is called Tangelo. Also from a Maker Studio, I'm going to be playing around with some of their gel stains today. And y'all, these gel stains are probably my new favorite medium to use because guess what? These gel stains are water-based. They're super easy to clean up. You just wash all of your utensils, your brushes and everything out with soap and water. No, absolutely no hard cleanup. It's super duper easy. The colors I'm gonna be using today are Antique Pine and Windsor Gray. I'm also gonna seal everything with Amy Howard at Home's brand new sealer called Matte Sealer. This is a really pretty, super matte sealer no brush marks. It's a great, great, great sealer to use because again, it dries super matte. I'm also going to be doing a DIY crackle finish today. And for that, I'm just going to use some regular cheap old Elmer school glue that I picked up from my local dollar store. So let's jump in and get started. So let's shake our gel stain up. I'm going to go ahead and shake up both of my colors. But for my back here, I'm just going to use the Windsor Gray first. Again, a water-based stain. Isn't that awesome? Now, you really don't have to worry about uh, painting in between these spaces if you don't want to, but you totally can. If you feel like it, it's totally up to you. I wanna point out, I put this line here on purpose because there's this trend going around right now where like your top half is stained, a pretty stain, and then your bottom half is painted white. I put that here to make it easy if that's the look that you're going for, but if you don't wanna go for that look, guess what? You can totally just paint over it and you won't even see this. Even though we are painting over these lines, you're still gonna be able to see it. You can still see that coming through. And I'll hold this up to the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. If you don't want your background to be crackled, you can just go ahead and just paint your background whatever color you want to. Remember, this is matching your colors and whatever you've got going on. I am going to be putting this on my front door. So 
that's why I'm making sure that I use some paints that are going to be compatible for outside. Okay, because this is a stain, we are going to be wiping it off. It's up to you as far as how dark you want it to be. Obviously, you want to let it set on a little bit longer if you want it to be darker. If you want a lighter stain, go ahead and wipe that off before it soaks in too much. I'm just going to let this set for a few minutes, then I'm going to pick it up so you can see. I'm not sure if the camera will totally pick up, but you can still see the outline of where our words are going to go. Again, water-based, so we just drop it into a little bowl of soapy water, and it's going to clean right up. You don't have to use mineral spirits or anything for that. I don't want a super-duper dark stain, so I'm just going to grab a cotton rag and just start pulling off some of that. The crackle look that I'm going for is going to have the turquoise painted over this. And if you've never done that crackle technique before, it is so much fun to watch happen. I've also done this crackle technique before with um, the Eileen's glue. That seems to work pretty good. You can also use school. Um, wood glue works really good. And it's really neat because the different glues that you use will actually give you a different look as far as how it crackles. I've got a piece of furniture that I put into my laundry room that I used several of these crackles on and it turned out really really neat. Now before I do the crackle on top of this I do want it to dry just slightly. So I'm just going to lay this to the side and then we'll start working on our other pieces. This side is going to come together super quick. So it's not like it's going to take you all afternoon to get your sign painted. Okay. And we'll, I'm going to come back to this after it finishes drying. So let's just lay that to the side. So now I'm going to go in with my Bajas buff and I'm going to paint my words. I'm going to paint my hay there and all of my pumpkin letters in this Bajas buff. I won't bore you with painting this on camera. I'll just come back and it'll be done. I do want to point out that you have the option to paint the sides of your words or if you want to kind of give it a little bit of depth, you can be super careful and not get your paint on those edges. And that's what I'm going to do. I want those dark edges to show through because I really like how that looks. See, see the contrast with the white and the dark edge. So it's just a personal preference. You do whatever you, whichever look you like. If you want all of it to be painted, then by all means, go ahead and paint those edges. Again, I'm not going to bore you. I'm just going to come back and all of this is going to be done. I do want to give you one tip when you're painting your letters. If you want to keep that edge super dark, you want to make sure when you paint, you bring your brush out. If you go like this, your edge may get paint on it. So if you start here and pull that out and then flip your brush and pull out again, then you won't have any paint on your edges. <laughs> Just don't drop your brush in it. I do like to use a flat brush when I paint these letters. Just thinks it make I think it makes it just a little bit easier. And I'm trying to avoid that edge. 
Okay, so I've got my hay there and I've started on pumpkin now. So I'm gonna finish up this and when I come back, our stain should be dry on our board and we'll also paint our cute little pumpkin here. Okay, so while I had my Baja buff opened, I wanted to go ahead and paint the outline of my pumpkin. So now I've got all three of these elements to our sign done. Now, next I wanna go in with some more of the gel stain and this time I'm gonna use the antique pine. I do kind of chuckle when I look at this because it kind of looks like a heart, <laughs> like the heart that's in your body. Maybe it looks like a little pepper, I don't know. But once you put it all together, you can see that it's a pumpkin. I did not put the laser on this when I designed it for a specific reason because some people may want to paint this a solid color. You may want to do it different colors. So I just left that open for your own interpretation. If you want to paint your stem like I'm doing, just grab a pencil and just trace around that outside edge so that you know where your stain needs to stop. Again, this is the antique pine stain and it is also water-based. These are from a maker studio. I'll be sure to put a link to all the products I'm using in today's video down in the description box below. We're gonna do this stain the same way we did our Windsor Gray. I'm gonna leave it on there for a few minutes and then I'll wipe it off. And it's okay if you kind of get out of the line because the piece that goes over the top is going to cover that up. I did a really cool technique using both of these stains for a Maker Studio on their website or on their Facebook page rather, and that turned out really, really cute. If you wanna check that out, I'll put a link to that in the description box as well. And because this is a water-based stain, I'm not gonna really worry about getting my hands dirty normally if I were using an oil-based stain, I would have some gloves on or something because I hate the way oil base feels. So these gel stains that are water-based are my favorite. And remember guys, you don't have to set your sign up like I've got it. If you wanna get creative with your pieces, you can always flip your sign over onto the back. It's not lasered at all. And you can just let your imagination take over. Now I'm just gonna take my rag and pull some of that off. Our gray is almost dry and you can see how nice it looks. More of that wood grain really shows through. So the color does change slightly as it dries. And again, don't be afraid to layer these stains if you want to. Okay, this is another element done. So next, I'm gonna take my Tangelo color in our Arteza Outdoor Acrylic Colors. This is already open, so I'm just gonna give this a super quick paint job. I'm not even gonna worry about putting any of this on my plate. I'm just gonna dump it on here and go to town. I think it would also be super cute to put a pattern inside your pumpkin. Think a leopard.
Okay, now we have a cute little orange pepper, don't we? Mm. Okay, so again, I'm going to move this over to the side. And can you see the change that is already happening here as our stain is drying? I think that is such a pretty color. Again, that's the antique pine color. Okay, so now I'm ready to start on this crackle. And again, I'm going to be using the Elmer's School Glue. And the kind of glue that you use is going to affect the look of your crackle. So just keep that in mind. I'm just going to go in with my school glue. If you paint it on thick, you're going to get a little bit of a different look than you're going to get if you paint it on thin. So we are literally just painting on our Elmer School Glue. When you're doing this technique, you have a fine window. You want your glue to have a tacky appearance. You want it to be able to touch and not have any of that glue come onto your finger. But you don't want it to be too dry so that it's not going to crackle. And when you do this, if you want to have some spots that are thin and have some spots that are thick, you can totally do that. You're just going to get a different look in your crackle. So just be aware of that. If you want a real uniform crackle look, then you want to make sure you've got the same consistency. I want mine to look like it is super old because we're going to be putting this gorgeous Indian summer color over the top of it. And I want it to look like it's a really, really old piece of painted wood. I'm going to use my blow dryer next, and I'm going to just hit my glue. I'm going to hit the thicker parts first, because that's what's going to need the help the most. Okay, that looks like it's pretty good. So now we're going to go in with our paint. And it's okay if you go in a little bit heavy with this paint. If you want it to have a lot more of the gray showing through, you can definitely do that. You don't have to paint it solid. Okay, now we're going to hit this again with our blow dryer and we're going to watch the magic happen. So sit tight. Okay, can you see all of that pretty crackle? And I just want to point out what I was telling you about thin glue being left on versus the thicker glue. If you paint your glue on thin, you're going to get more of those fine hairline crackle look versus having that thick look, you're going to get a bigger crackle. So if you want to mix it up like I did, or if you want to make it more uniform, that is totally up to you. This does need to dry just a little bit more before we start gluing everything together. So while we're waiting on this to dry, I'm going to rinse out these brushes really quick. Put my top back on this pretty Indian summer color. 
And I want to move on to the top part of the frame. This is my chance to do something super fun and really cute with this. And this is where our black paint is gonna come in. I love to mix black and white together with super fun colors like the turquoise and the orange. So I'm gonna take one of these flat brushes and this is a little Royal and Lang nickel brush that I picked up from, I think, maybe Michael's or it may have actually been Ross or somewhere where you can find the paint brushes back there. But it's a super flat brush. It is probably about a quarter of an inch thick. I do want to be offloading some of... Let me put my top back on my glue so that doesn't dry out. But I do want it to offload some of my paint, so I'm going to grab just a little cheap glass plate that I get from the Dollar Tree. I really like using these as my little paint palette. And y'all, watch what we're going to do here. This is going to be so stinking cute. So I just want to sort of give it a little bit of that Mackenzie Childs look. So I'm just going to paint some black and white stripes on here. And y'all, if you want to check out this entire kit that I've got for sale, you can find it on my blog at mamadearsthediy.com and then just click on the shop tab that's at the very top. Okay, y'all, isn't that super duper fun? Let's see what it's going to look like on top not quite dry so I'm gonna be super careful but look how cute that is oh my gosh I love it okay so now we are ready to glue it all together again I'm gonna be using the Starbond thick glue this is the clear it's an instant adhesive but it's a CA glue so I'm gonna get a great bond if you aren't gonna be putting this outside you could try to put it together with hot glue or a wood glue, but I like that I don't have to clamp anything down when I use this star bond. It's going to give me a great, nice hold. Just going to line everything up. I am really excited about this design. I hope y'all are too. Just remember that this is merely a suggestion on what you can do with this kit. You can use this inside or outside. Isn't that adorable? I cannot wait to put this together. I am doing this on camera for the very first time for y'all. I have not tried it. This is just what I had envisioned in my head and seeing it all come together is making me so happy. So I think I'm going to go ahead and glue this on first. And now that our crackle is finished, you can faintly still see the lines that were lasered in here for our words. I'm not sure if the camera can fully pick that up, but you can still, even though it's heavily painted, it's been stained, it's got this awesome crackle finish on it, you can still see 
the outline. So you don't have to worry about, oh my goodness, I don't know where everything is supposed to go. Have no fear. I've taken care of y'all. So again, I'm going to start with the big pumpkin here. I just love all of the dimension that you get because it's stacked three high. You've got a lot of fun dimension there. So cute. Okay, now it is time to put all of our words on. And again, I don't know if the camera can fully pick that up or not, but you can definitely see it in person. I'm not gonna glue down every little piece just going to glue down the main parts, the big thick parts, and the very edges. This is a clear glue. So even if you get some that seeps out just a tiny bit, it's going to dry clear. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, how adorable is that? I do want to give this just a few minutes to fully dry. In the meantime, I will grab some jute cord and I'm also going to grab some of my buffalo plaid ribbon and make a little bow to go on here just to finish it off. I like to call these like scrap bows, rag bows, anything like that. I usually save all kinds of my ribbon pieces. I've got some different size buffalo plaids here. I've got some orange grain that goes great with that tangelo color that we've painted. I've got some little pom-pom fabric trim here. I've got some Dollar Tree wired ribbons and just a lot of random stuff if we're being totally honest. I've also got some jute twine that I just tied some little simple wooden beads on. I did a few like that. And then I just have some plain jute twine. So we're just going to put this together and see what we come up with. See if we like it. I'm going to start off with this buffalo plaid on the bottom. And then I'm just going to start layering in just crisscrossing. I want to mainly put all of the bigger ones on the back. I'll throw my colors in the middle. Add in that cute black trim. So stinking cute. Maybe put in some more of the turquoise. And I want to finish it off with the smallest ribbons and also the jute cord. And let's see what we've got. I've just got a pipe cleaner on the bottom here. And we'll bunch everything up and then use our pipe cleaner to tie it. There's really no right or wrong way to do these little rag bows. I think they're just super cute and add just a little bit of that whimsical feel to it. I will dovetail some of the ends just to finish it off a little bit more. But y'all, that's how easy it is to make one of these little rag bows. That didn't cut very good, did it? I 
I don't want all of them to be dovetailed. And honestly, when I do these bows, I like to use a mix of wired ribbons as well as some that aren't wired. I think the ones that aren't wired, just the simple grow grain look kind of gives it more of that relaxed feel. So don't be afraid to just mix up those textures and colors. Okay. It's going to be so cute. And I just noticed something, y'all. Totally forgot to glue on my last piece here. What is wrong with me? Let me grab my glue and get that on. There's one thing that I need to do before I call it finished, and that is to paint on my matte sealer. I do want to let this dry overnight, but I want to go ahead and finish putting the hanger on so y'all can see what it looks like. But you do want to make sure that your project is fully, fully cured before you put on your sealer. So I've got some jute twine here, and I just tied on a big wooden bead at one end. I'm going to string it through. I'm going to string my jute cord through the other end. I'm going to tie a knot on this end. And y'all, this is going to be our hanger. Something a little more decorative than just a plain jute hanger. You could also use some wire. That would be super cute. I want to make sure that you've got enough knots in there so that it, your hole doesn't slip through. And just give it an extra tug to be on the safe side. Okay, how cute is that? And now we'll just put on our bow at the top and our little door hanger is done y'all i'm gonna go put it on the door really fast then i'll let you see what it looks like okay y'all i just got it hung up on the front door it looks so cute oh my goodness i love the crackle finish and I think the bow on top just sets it off. What do y'all think? That does it for today's video, y'all. I hope y'all enjoy this sign. And remember, if you want to check it out, I'll be sure to put a link to it down in the description box. It will come unpainted, so you can customize this to fit any of your decor. You can put your own colors. You can put your own spin on it. I can't wait to see what y'all do with this kit. Just going to absolutely blow it out of the water. This is just merely a suggestion, y'all. Get creative. Think outside the box. Really push your creativity outside of your comfort zone. This will be a limited edition sign, so if you want to grab yours, be sure to check out the link in the description box below. Until next time, happy DIY, y'all.